the top three features of Camtasia 2022 and some added bonuses. Hi, I'm Naomi and I want to say that Camtasia is just improving year after year. Today, I would like to go over three of the major features that I think make Camtasia 2022 the absolute best video editing workflow platform. And I'm also going to go over some of the uh, other features that I'm calling bonuses. They're a little bit smaller, but they are still great bonus uh, features. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first major feature consists of three parts, all having to do with the canvas, anchors, and cursors. Camtasia has now added Align Assist Guides, which makes it much easier to align media and different assets with each other on the canvas. As you can see here, as I move these assets around, the yellow guidelines appear and make it easy to align to other objects into the center of the canvas. The only comment I have here is, if you have older eyes like I do, it can be hard to see those lines on a 4K monitor. I scaled my display up to 250% to make it easier for you to see everything. Normally, I have my 4K monitor scaled to 175% and sometimes it's a little hard to see those lines. Next, with any object on the canvas, we can now move the anchor point to anywhere we want. Previously, we could only move an object around the center. Put your cursor over the circled X and then hold your control key down as you move the anchor. Once you start moving the anchor, you can release the control key and you will see the yellow guidelines appear. As you can see, wherever the anchor point is moved to, that is the location where it will rotate around. Let's put an animation on these to demonstrate. The only issue to be aware of is if you want to change the size of the item, the anchor point becomes out of alignment. The easiest way I have found to get around this is to move the anchor back to somewhere in the middle of the media. Resize the media, then move the anchor back to where you want it. Now let's look at the cursor. Remember, if you expanded a cursor in Camtasia 2021 or earlier, it could become quite blurry. Well, in Camtasia 2022, the cursor is a vector cursor. No matter how large you expand it, all the way up to 2000%, it will be nice, sharp and clear. No more blurry cursors. Okay, I want to go over briefly, well, maybe not so briefly, but I want to talk about the uh, edit cursor path feature. It's a great feature, but it takes a little bit to get your head around. And I truly believe that it deserves its own training video, which I am going to do. So the main point here is that while you're watching this, is to remember when you're thinking about editing the cursor path, to think of it in small chunks. You're not talking about the whole video, you're only talking about small chunks. So let's go ahead and look at the um, edit cursor path. Let's look at what happens when we do the normal cursor smoothing. It makes things move a little smoother, but my hand was still a little jittery in places. As you can see, if we have put the cursor smoothing on, we cannot edit the cursor path. This is one reason to use editing a cursor path sparingly and in small areas. What I am going to do is split this one area so it is separated as its own section. I will remove the cursor smoothing and the edit cursor path is now available for this specific area. Let's click on it. Now we have two choices, simplify existing path or create new path. We want to simplify the existing path. Let me expand the timeline here. 
Watch as I move the playhead. On the canvas, the cursor matches each start and point on the timeline track. Let's zoom in here. We can make this a little smoother by removing one of these points. It's hard to see without it being zoomed right in, but the point has turned yellow on the canvas and on the timeline. We can adjust these points on the timeline or delete it. This can also be done on the canvas. We can also change the type of line curves. As I said, this takes a little to wrap your head around, and I will be putting together an in-depth video on this feature. Before we move on from cursor editing, I do want to show you how to do a simplified path in Camtasia 2022. I actually like this quite a bit. Let's say you have a screenshot of a browser page, but realize you need to have people see a cursor going from one location to another. Now I can go to either cursor effects or visual effects and drag the simplified cursor path onto the canvas. You will see on the canvas and on the timeline a very simple curved path with a tiny cursor. Let's go ahead and increase the size so we can all see it. Now I will move the starting point up to the URL and the other end to contact. I don't want it to have that much of a curve to it. So I am simply going to make it a straight line by clicking on the straight line type here. Now I can move the cursor to a third location by moving the playhead on the timeline. Right click and select extend cursor path to playhead. I want to make that a curve so I will change the line type to one of those curves. Now to me, that cursor moves way too fast to the next location. I will just slide the animation bar for that movement on the timeline over to the right and lengthen the time a little bit. As you can see, this can be quite powerful when you have screenshots and want to add cursor movement, or for that matter, when you have a video and want to add emphasis to a point in the video. Okay, here are the first quick set of small bonus features. First, Camtasia 2022 now has spell check. Yay! You can also now cut and paste directly from Word to Camtasia as plain text. Simply remember for pasting to use Control plus Shift plus V to paste as plain text. Moving on, we can now easily duplicate media. If you are on the canvas, hold your control key down, click on the media, and drag. If you are on your Camtasia timeline, click on the media, and then control plus D. Now make a note here. This shortcut, control plus D, has changed from what it did in previous versions. Previous versions, Control plus D would unselect and bring both control handles back to the playhead. Now, the new shortcut for that is Control plus Shift plus D. So Control plus D to duplicate, Control plus Shift plus D to close a playhead selection. Okay, let me know in the comments below which of these features you like the most. For me, the two that I really like is being able to move the anchor point to any place on the object that I want and being able to rotate it from there uh, instead of being stuck on the center. And I also like the simplified editing uh, path for the cursor. Those are the two that I really like. So which do, two do you like? Moving on to the second major Camtasia 2022 feature, which is the library. This library is extensive with over 1,000 new Camtasia 2022 assets and to be honest, in my opinion, far more useful than previous Camtasia libraries. I want you to know exactly what you are getting in each and we'll look at a few of these. You are getting 14 audio assets and honestly, these are okay if you're just getting started. You'll soon be looking for more music resources on the internet. 334 callout assets. These include counters, 
indicator and text assets, indicators, and indicators with dividers. Six channel subscribes assets. 124 cursor animation assets. Well, you see, there is a long list of animation assets. 50 cursor hero assets. 68 system cursor vectors. 181 emphasis FX assets. For these, I suggest using the customizable version so you can brand to your colors. There are bursts and collapses, clickable gestures, isolation and targeting. 20 expressive animation assets. 56 fills and overlays. 238 icons and glyphs, including micro animations. 23 structures to help you build your own city or town. 33 titles assets, and finally, 26 UI kit assets. The library obviously has a ton of assets, a thousand plus assets, and it can be overwhelming. Here's what my suggestion is, is that when you get Camtasia 2022, you sit with it for a couple hours, an hour, whatever amount of time you need, and go through all of the assets and decide of those assets which of them best matches what you would be doing in your video editing. And then take those assets, brand them with your colors if they are able to be branded, brand them with your colors, and then put those assets into your own personal library. That way you don't have to go through all the assets every time. You have the assets that you use most often with your branding in your library and you can use those consistently without having to search for them constantly. So let's move on to the next. Okay, here is the second set of quick bonus features. The VU meter now has a global gain control. Simply click on the meter and adjust as you see fit. Remember to avoid those spikes. If you silenced a section of audio and want to restore it, it is quite simple to do now. Simply right click on the media and select Restore Audio or the shortcut keystroke of Shift plus R. You know how sometimes you have B-roll and it is not long enough for what you need? Before you had to copy and paste, copy and paste until you reached the end. Well, now it is as simple as a couple clicks. All you need is a second piece of media above or below it. Simply right click on the media you want to extend, select repeat media, and extend right or extend left. It will extend by putting copies of the B roll stitched together to the end of the empty track space until it hits the end of the video or the next clip. Okay, we're on to the third major feature of Camtasia 2022, which really has two parts consisting of new transitions and a new visual effect that will inspire your creativity. There are 30 new transitions in Camtasia 2022, 11 of which I really like. One of the things I found a little frustrating with a few of the Camtasia 2021 transitions is it would show black instead of what was behind the transition or the color of the actual canvas. With these new transitions, that is not the case. Also, remember, all transitions can now be reversed by right-clicking on the transition and selecting Reverse Transition. Let's quickly look at what my top 11 Camtasia 2022 transitions look like out of their new batch of 30.
can you think of some great ways to use these transitions to help tell your story? I certainly have some ideas. Now here is the Camtasia 2022 visual effect that I am really excited about. It is the blend mode. There is so much potential for creativity. Currently, there are a few ways to change the look of a video clip or image. You can use the color tint. You can use color eyes. You can use a color LUT. And you can use the color adjustment. All of these are great. However, they don't give you as much potential for creativity as the blend mode. For now, I will give you the highlights and some interesting things you can do. I will have a separate training video on this effect with what each mode means and more examples of what can be done. Here are the basics with a short description. Let's take this colored asset and put it over this video. Now we'll add the blend mode effect. As you will see in the Camtasia 2022 properties panel, there is a drop down for the mode. Each of these modes blends with the layer below it with the type of channel lighting and or a mix of channel lighting and color. The first section is normal or dissolve, neither of which really does anything unless you make some adjustments. The next section is your darkening of the light section. This will take the top layer and blend with the bottom layer, giving various levels of darkness. On all these modes, you can make adjustments, which I will show you in just a moment. The second section is for the opposite. It blends the top with the bottom, lightening the video or image. The next section uses a contrast between the dark and light modes, mixing them together. The next section is an inversion between the bottom layer and the top layer, or several layers. The next section is a component blend. They only work with the primary colors. The last section is the matte blend. As I mentioned, I'll go more in depth with the upcoming dedicated video on all of these blends. You can adjust all modes by changing the intensity. You can adjust the range in how much of the color channel to adjust. You can add additional layers to change the look even more so. As you will see, each layer will make a difference in the look and feel. This layer is a blend mode of overlay. This layer is a blend of screen mode. Look at what happens when I hide one or the other, or both back to the original. The only caveat is if you group together the blend modes only, you lose the blended look. So you need to group all the layers together as one group. You can create a neat effect of showing how the color blend affects the bottom layer by using an animation and moving the blend layers to the right or left. Now, if you want to get creative, you can use masks with your blended modes. Here, I took the still image of the fox on the highway and created a black and white mask in Photoshop, but you can use absolutely any free painting drawing program to do this as long as you can make the size of the canvas 1920 by 1080 paint black and white and control the softness or hardness of the brush. I put some b-roll of koi fish over the fox layer, the mat over that using luminosity and an overlay blend mode for the koi fish. Taking the same koi fish b-roll, I found b-roll of a wet, rainy road with a runner. The blend mode for the fish this time is vivid light at 66%, and the matte layer is luminosity again. However, now I have a question for you. Which do you like better? This blend mode of vivid light at 66% or a blend mode of overlay at 100%. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best. 
vivid light or overlay. Finally, I did a very basic mat of a slant with luminosity and a B-roll of a woman with a space helmet using a luminosity blend mode at 76%. As you can see, your imagination can have no limits of what you can create with this blend mode and a little masking. Okay, the quick last set of what I'm calling Camtasia 2022 bonuses. Let's stay with the visual effects section for a moment. There is a spotlight feature. You can adjust the location of the spotlight, the opacity, and the focus. You can even make an animation to have the spotlight move. Another feature which I know some people like is the outline edges. You can also adjust as to how much of the intensity and saturation you want. What I would like to see with this is being able to adjust the thickness of the lines. As far as rendering your video, there is now a new exporter called Local File. As you can see, the legacy exporter is still available. With the new exporter, you can export immediately with the default settings, maybe change the save location, or you can go to advanced settings and change the settings. There is one slight issue here, which I am hoping TechSmith is working on. Your location in any advanced settings you set are not saved the exporter reverts to TechSmith's factory settings. As I mentioned, I'm sure that's a minor fix that TechSmith will have updated shortly. When it finishes exporting, you now have three choices. Close out, view the rendered video, or go to the file location. Let's take a quick look at those settings. As you can see, everything reverted back to factory settings. If you're not using the factory default settings, just remember to change them each time before hitting the export button. If you like the default, simply click on export. Simple and fast. The recorder now works with virtual cameras. TechSmith has listed on their site all the cameras, webcams, and virtual cameras Camtasia 2022 is compatible with. They also let you know any mixed results with certain virtual cameras and any other issues that may have arisen with webcams. I'll put the link to this page in the description below for you. The home page is also revamped. We now have thumbnails to help us visually recognize the recent projects. It looks like the thumbnail is taken from wherever the playhead was residing when you closed out of Camtasia 2022. There are some new free templates TechSmith has provided and any of your own templates will appear here. There is a new recording slide out which you can select which recorder you want to use. I should note here with Camtasia 2022, there is a better workflow with Audiate. However, I do not currently work with Audiate, so I was not able to cover it within this training video. There is a learning section and resources section to help you along the way in your Camtasia video editing. Adventure. As I mentioned, I will have several training videos coming up in the following weeks that are going to go more in depth into the features and all the ins and outs of those specific features. If you're interested in getting Camtasia 2022 or upgrading, go ahead and use the link I've provided below you have a free trial at your fingertips. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day.